Hi, Ashley. Hello. Nice to see you. Nice to be here. Mm -hmm. How are you doing? I'm really good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm like flying out on a jet plane in a couple of days. So I am like oh, really good. I need that in my life. <laughs> All right, when is Costa Rica? When When is your trip? Costa Rica is going to be in October and I've got a few really good ones coming up before then. Thank goodness, because okay. it took a slow season and now I'm ready to jet away. I feel like you're like, what, how many times a year do you travel? I feel like you're traveling all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, usually it's at least once every two months. And then in the, in the fall, it gets to like once a month where we always have something happening. Um, I did again, like we have little trips all the time. So it's mm -hmm. more just like, where do I want to spend my energy? Do I want mm -hmm. to be gone all of the time? Mm -hmm. Um, so I had a really busy year last year. And then when I got to like January of this year, I was like, I'm going to sit here for about three months mm -hmm. um, and just work and chill and be slow. Yeah. And now I'm ready to take off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. I just have to say, side note, but about you traveling and we'll probably even this, I'm sure even the reason you are this way probably has something to do with even what we'll talk about today. But I really appreciate that as a mom of like multiple humans, mm -hmm. you really commit to time for yourself. And yes. I'm not a mama, so I, I can't even go into that, but I've worked with moms for like 20 years and there's a difference. There's a difference between those who do really put that time aside and commit to that and those who don't. And I mean, gosh, no shade on either side, but there's, I don't know what that difference is. Like, I don't know how, well, how I'm even going to skip cute. my first question. How does, how does that happen for you? How do you do it? So I've done it both ways. I've done it where I didn't prioritize myself at all. And I was mm -hmm. all kids. And it was like, I was living this like martyr life where I mm -hmm. gave up everything for myself for the benefit of others. Yeah. And then I do it where I, I know that if I take care of myself, if my needs are met, if I'm happy as a person, I'm a better wife, a better partner, a better human, all of these things. So mm -hmm. as someone has done both sides of it, I know mm -hmm. that like, there's no reason feeling guilt or shame around this. There's no reason feeling bad. Like we don't really travel with our kids at this point. Like we do like little things here, but when we have a vacation, we know that like that's quality time for us mm -hmm. as like husband and wife, that's our recharge time. We, we have four kids at home. That's really busy. So mm -hmm. we like, there's no point in carrying guilt or shame and looking after yourself as a mom, because when your needs are met, when you are thriving, you thrive as a mother. So it actually like feeds my ability to show up as a good mom instead of taking it away. Like I remember like when I was doing the martyr thing, like I was crying in my bathroom every day. I was so overstimulated. I was drowning and I didn't enjoy motherhood. How could I, my needs were not being met at all. So now, you know, we do the things to look after ourselves and traveling is a, I'm a Sagittarius. I'm a bit of a free spirit. I need, I need to, I need to feel free in my life. Yeah. Um, travel is a really big part of it and having a really big community is a big part of it. And that doesn't mean just family. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I know some people don't like to have their kids watch, but I have a very trusted network of people where I know they're safe. I know they're looked after and I don't feel guilt when I do it now. And I just, I feel way better. Yay. I'm also a better parent. Uh huh. It takes a village. It's, you know, that statement's been around for as long as we've been around. Motherhood was not meant to do alone. Sure Just, the heck wasn't. It was not meant for that. So. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. We're going to backtrack. Thank you for that. We're going to backtrack to the one and only guaranteed question of our conversation, which is what are you currently reclaiming? I love this question. Mm -hmm. um, I'm reclaiming my authenticity and my <sighs> voice in life mm -hmm. right now. And mm -hmm. it feels really good. Um, mm -hmm. I've had people actually message me and say, Hey, like the growth that I've seen in you in the last year is so crazy because for, you know, I was in that relationship for six years and my voice was muted. Mm -hmm. I got, it was like, I wasn't important. I didn't have anything important to say. And then for 10 years after that, I looked for external validation to make me feel good instead of looking within and like mm -hmm. reconnecting to myself and like, who am I? What do I have to say? And mm -hmm. so right now that is what I'm reclaiming. I am unapologetically myself. I am talking, I'm using my voice and uh, 
it feels really good. <laughs> yeah. Are you getting any pushback or resistance from anyone? No, but I also am not in the energy where I hold space for that. So yeah, I know that that's, it's a big thing for me. Like I know, um, you know, when I'm, let's just say creating content, mm -hmm. if I'm creating content, um, and I'm, I'm in the energy of like being a little bit negative with my content or whatever, I'm going to get more backlash. I work in network marketing for anybody mm -hmm. that doesn't know me. So that door is always open to backlash as it is. Right. But now I find as I'm showing up authentically in that space, it's like no one bothers to come at me for it because they know that I'm not open to receiving it. I love that. That's just such a good example of how strong energy is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, Cause I used to get it all the time when I was like unsure of what I was doing, when yes. I wasn't like fully like in the faith and the belief of what I was doing, I got mm -hmm. a lot of backlash. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people challenged what I was doing. They didn't like the way I was doing it. I got mm -hmm. kind of shit all over all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and now nobody really bothers because they see somebody who is like confident in what they're doing and that energy doesn't invite mm -hmm. negativity into it. Totally. I'm really glad you said that. Um, tell the people a little bit, those who don't know you, I know a lot of, a lot of people listening are, I'll say local. I mean, most of our community is, well, I actually don't know where most of your community is. Most of it's so, here. Oh, yeah. 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 So I know that a lot of people listening know you, but there's, there's a lot who don't. So share, share who you are, what you do. Absolutely. Um, so my name is Ashley Russell. I am a mom of four um, and I am parenting everything from toddlers to teenagers. Uh, my kids are 14, 12, eight, and almost three. Mm -hmm. um, I just got married, which is awesome. And I am an executive national vice president in Arbonne. So I know that doesn't make sense to a lot of people. It just means I have worked my way up to the very top of the company. So I lead a really big sales organization. Um, and I've been able to like incorporate my passion for fitness, health, wellness, everything into that business. So I can serve women, especially, um, it's just been the vehicle for me to expand my life, which brings me so much joy. And I love what I do. Yeah. Well, and you spoke about community earlier too, like talk about growing a community. Yes. So growing a community for me was so, so important because I spent a lot of my life without without it. Mm -hmm. Um, I had my first baby when I was 20. So as you can imagine, like everybody else was doing really different things. All the other people mm -hmm. my age were, you know, in school or just traveling or whatever it is that they were doing. And by 22, I had, um, a toddler and a newborn. And I remember thinking how isolating mm -hmm. it was like, I was so lonely. Um, it was really, it was hard. So mm -hmm. when I stepped into this space, I was like, I want to a use it to help women who feel, you know, all the things that I went through financially insecure, stuff like that, but also give women a community when they feel isolated. So the people that I work with the most are moms, right? Those are just my people. That's who I connect with the most. And really common denominators for us is that it feels like we live Groundhog Day. Yeah. Right? Like, especially when you're home with kids alone, like you're in your sweatpants, like mm -hmm. you're not really, you don't have anywhere to go. It's stressful to go places. So it's nice to be able to have a community of women where we're uplifting you, we're supporting you. And at the base of it, you're talking to adults. Yeah. You're losing your brain. And right. like- it's a hard adjustment to go from your regular life to just dealing with kids all day. So that aspect of the community of women, like we're getting together, we're doing events, we're traveling together. Mm -hmm. um, it's so nice. And I was actually just joking with some of the Arbonne girls when I was like, you know, what's really cool about this business is it's given us back that like school age friendship where like, you know, you're getting ready together and it's like, you're having sleepovers mm -hmm. or you're on vacation. And it's so nice to be able to relive that like sisterhood as mm -hmm. an adult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Who was I just talking to? Oh, okay. This is irrelevant based on the time that this episode comes out, but episode that came out the other day with a woman named Claire, we were talking about sister wounds and how, when we were teenagers, most of us, I think I can say mm -hmm. it was purely competition. It was jealousy. It was, it was like, it wasn't good. <laughs> <You Yes. know? laughs> even, even sometimes with like our quote unquote closest friends, like it was just not, it just wasn't, it wasn't a good scene. And now we get to do it again. And there's so much healing in that as women. And I don't know if men feel the same, but there's so much healing yeah. in, in being in spaces with women who like have your back. 
Yes. And are celebrating your accomplishments, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's really, it's, it's healing. That is for Mm -hmm. sure. Like, I don't know about you, but my high school experience wasn't fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was actually nervous to come into the field that I work in because it is mostly women. And I had this like deep rooted fear. What if I'm not accepted? What if I'm, Mm -hmm. you know, bullied all of these things. And what happens is you step into it and all of a sudden I'm in my very first environment where everybody wants you to win. You're yeah. lifted up. They pour belief into you. They love on mm-hmm. you. They help you. All of these things. And I was so surprised by it in a good way. Mm-hmm. I was really surprised. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was it was healing for sure. Yeah, I love that. And um, oh, I had a thought. I had a question about that. If it comes back, I'll I'll, I'll ask if it comes back. Um, okay. So we. I was trying to think of how you and I first connected. I okay. So maybe maybe four years ago, maybe it was 2020. I was dating someone who dated your sister. Yes. Yeah. And he was like, we're talking about fitness because I was still a personal trainer at the time. And, or I was just coming out of it. And he was like, oh, you know, Ashley, what was your, what was your McLaughlin? McLaughlin. And I was like, ah, uh, I don't know. And he's like, tough as a mother. And I was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know who she is, but like, we don't know each other. And so then I really started like paying attention to you. And, and I was like, God, she's so beautiful and she's so strong and she's a mama and she's just doing it. And oh, and I was, I really, I was quite drawn to you then. And then I don't really know how we kind of reconnected in the last year, but I do remember I was, I was creating the essentials oracle deck and I was like this is so exciting to have an oracle deck for the membership I love this who do I think would like this and I was thinking of like a small handful of local women that I thought would really love it and that would be a good like kind of tradesy share and I was like Ashley but you were it was really intimidating to me and I was like oh I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can reach out to her. She's got so much going on. I don't even know if she cares about what I'm doing. I'm going to do it anyway. I was, I was having this like year of like, just ask. Mm-hmm. And so I messaged and you, I think it maybe was that ask and you were in Hawaii. Yes. I remember this so vividly because it was okay. so weird. The turn of events that happened. And I was like, okay, <laughs> so share, share, share. Cause it's, it is cool. So- Yeah, I was in Hawaii and um, that was in January. And in November, I had just gone to that event called Awaken where it was my first, like my first step into like healing and that whole journey Mm -hmm. and my first time doing breath work and all of these things. And it just like opened a door to this world for me that I didn't know existed. Yeah. So essentially what it taught me was that I lived my life with anxiety always. I had like daily panic attacks. This was just my life. Mm -hmm. Um, And it meditation helped me overcome this. So I'm in Hawaii. I get really overstimulated easily. There's so many people there. It's my first MVP leadership meeting. (laughs) I am like such a teeny tiny fish in this huge pond. And uh, that morning I felt an anxiety attack coming on. So immediately I just went and I sat on the beach and I put in like a little frequency playlist and I was meditating and just like I could hear the sound of the waves. It was so nice. Mm -hmm. And while I was meditating, you popped up for me. (laughs) And it was so weird because at this point we hadn't really talked. No. But like you kind of, you popped into my mind and I didn't know if my, was my mind being like, this is someone who you can work with to like daily because you know, those awakened events are great, but they're few and far Mm -hmm. between. Mm -hmm. And you are somebody who does this all the time. So I actually thought during that I should reach out to her. Mm -hmm. And then I opened Instagram afterwards to message you. Mm -hmm. And I had a voice note from you. Yeah. It's so wild. (laughs) It's so wild. And again, like coming back to energy. Yeah. Anyways, here we are. (laughs) Yeah. So I was like, oh, well that seems meant to be. (laughs) Uh huh. Yeah. I love this. I love the way the world does that. Okay. So I'm very familiar with Awaken. My partner used to work with them, like, as they were kind of first starting him and his last partner, um, worked very, very closely with Lucas and Hella. And that was okay. That's right. I saw that you had gone and I was like, oh, yes, people, people are finding breath work. I'm so freaking happy. That's right. And then I was like, okay, she's scary, but I'm going to ask her anyway. So, <laughs> so tell me, you don't have to go into detail because breath work can be very personal, but what was like, what was the overall experience? Like what, what was your like, aha, when you came out of that first breath journey? Oh 
my goodness. I've never been rocked like that by anything in my life. It was so crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> I was scared. I was like really, really scared going into it because um, I've had an, I had a religious upbringing and like not a bad one, not like an overly strict one, just like, you know, organized religion. And the first day that I went to this event, I could feel like organized religion never felt great to me. Mm -hmm. Like God felt great. Connection felt great, but organized religion, the rules, the stuff, the fear, the guilt, all of that stuff never felt good to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and like breath work and stuff isn't something that's talked about. So it felt a little bit like taboo what I was doing. And like, you know, they deal with like energy and like, I was honestly terrified that something negative would happen. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, releasing myself to that. I was like, Oh, sitting in the fear of like something negative is going to pop up for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but it didn't, it was, I didn't even know why I had booked that. And, uh, it was so <laughs> funny. Sometimes you just book things and they change your life. So we do. Um, that first breath work session, it was about reconnecting to myself and mm-hmm. I didn't even realize how disconnected I had been for the last mm-hmm. decade and how I functioned fully out of external validation and none of it was coming from within me. Yeah. So it was really cool because I didn't really know what to expect, but you know, my hands start tingling um, and I can literally feel someone holding my hands in their palm and I can feel or see this like, you know, white light energy coming through it. And what happened was I ended up, whoever was holding my hands folded them on my stomach and on my chest and all of that light, I knew it was like love just poured into me. And it was like, healing this relationship with myself or was like, it's safe to come home. Like you're safe mm. to be in you. Like you, ugh, you were, yeah. you know, all I ever needed was me. And I was searching constantly outside of myself for everything. Make me feel pretty, make me feel loved, yeah. make me feel enough. And it's like that first session, like I did three and they walked me through journeys. Um, it was so, it was so crazy what it was like a book, right? Mm -hmm. First one, chapter one, chapter two, end of book. Um, So the first one was just, I healed a disconnect from myself and I came Mm -hmm. out of it and was like, oh, I am enough and that's Mm -hmm. it. Everything I need is within me. Mm -hmm. I don't, it took away all competition. It took away all jealousy. It took away all fear. And like, I had met the love of my life at this point but I had such a disgusting fear inside of me that he was going to leave at some point, even though he's so perfect and so amazing and like loves me so well. I still was like at a certain point when I'm not enough, maybe I'm 50 and I'm not, you know, I don't look like I do now, whatever it is, he's going to leave at some point because the root of that fear was that I'm not enough. Yeah. And so like that one breathwork session, I think did like, did more for me than anything else possibly could have because it just gave me back a love for myself that I was missing. It was so amazing. All my (laughs) little arm hairs are standing on end. (laughs) Um, I really relate to that. And I, this is always, this this is always the thing I come back to. And when, you know, people ask me like, you know, what's so great about breath work? It's when someone can have that moment that you had where it's like, oh, it's all right here. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. And, and if someone hasn't experienced this, I can understand how they're like, okay, cool. Like, I don't. You so, can't explain it. You can't explain <laughs> it. And I know that feeling. And it's like, to me, well, it was that feeling essentially that that's like the reason I, I even started doing this work is because of that feeling. And it was like, everyone needs to feel that feeling. And Mm -hmm. so I'm going to see if I can help everyone feel that feeling. And I'm going to assume that that feeling hasn't ever left. Like it's just now it's like integrated into you. Yeah. Yes. Like it has changed my whole, like the entire way I operate. Like I used to have stress dreams about Austin cheating on me because that was my (sighs) lived experience. That was my past experience. And all of the time, my subconscious was like bringing it to me, bringing it to me, bringing it to me. I haven't mm-hmm. had a single one since then because now it's just like, that's not even a fear. Wow. Oh, <laughs> it changed a lot. Like I just, yeah. 
But no amount of talk therapy could have done what that one breathwork session did. Like it took things yeah. out of my freaking soul and brought them to me and healed, right? Like it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what it does, folks. That's what it does. And okay, we talked a little bit about this before we hit record. How how has even just that played into your business and the growth of your business and how you lead a team? Oh, yeah, it's changed a lot. Um, because in business, you know, we deal a lot with money, we deal, we work in sales and mm -hmm. all of this is just energy. Yeah. Right. So it really brought me back to like, what is the energy that even with like following up with people, as simple as something with following up with a sales lead, right? Like what is the energy that I'm sending this message from? Yeah. Right. What am I, it's just made me so much more aware. Now I'm able to like teach my team that like we did a call last night on the importance of like visualization in your business and like really bringing in the energy of like what you want to come to fruition. Like, what are you calling in? What are you a magnet for? What is your, you know, vibrational frequency that you're operating from? And that just none of it existed to me before. Right. It was like, yeah. you talk about the things you make the sales, but I wasn't like my business has done so much better since learning all of this. And, um, I actually went through like a really rough part in my business after I first got into this Yeah, and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't figure out why it was happening. But because I had stepped into this work, I, I was able to see like every single time it feels like something is working against me. It feels like something is happening to me. The universe source, God, whatever it is that you have mm -hmm. is clearing a way for something better to come along. And the harder that I hang on, resisting the clearing that's happening, mm -hmm. the worse it is, the worse it feels. So like I was able, it was four months of losing people, losing volume, losing income. Like it was four months of just hard mm -hmm. clearing. And I was still like, I'm sitting back, I'm waiting for something. Like something is being brought to me right now. And then this past month, actually, um, I had a group of people come into my business bring in over 50,000 in volume. They are spiritual oh people. They are amazing leaders. And I just sat back and was like, first of all, thank you. Yeah. But also I'm so glad I didn't resist the hard. Yeah. I'm so glad I didn't hold on to it and like feed into it. Instead, I just sat back and said, go, whatever yeah. needs to go, go, because yeah. there is something coming. So that like getting into this kind of work has just made me a more chill person. First of all, like at the <laughs> core of it, I'm just more chill because I know that everything is happening for me. Mm -hmm. Everything is happening the exact way that it should be happening. Yeah. And it's up to me to know, you know, how to navigate it, how to deal with it and just full faith that it's happening for me. It's not happening to me. It's not happening against me. It's, it's yeah. all working out for me if I hold the faith. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. That even um, for those, I agree with everything you just said. And I know that there are people who are like, oh, you know, it must be nice to just be able to like trust and go with the flow and like, oh, <laughs> this, is, this is part of the time me, but most, you know, most of the time I lean into the trust and the surrender and the believing it's all there. There's also that little piece that wants to like control things and that like maybe more of like my masculine energy. It's like, sure, I can like trust and go with the flow. And so for anyone who's like, oh, I don't know if I can go with that language. It's the ability to pivot. Mm -hmm. So if something isn't going your way, your way, the way you think it should go. And you know, why is this happening to me? Which again, it isn't. <laughs> but if that's your language, and if you're in that, consider it just a pivot, then it's your ability to change direction. It's your ability to what go with the flow, but in, I'm, I'm like trying to find it in a more rigid, like masculine way. It, it's, it's pivot. It's like the best word. And so to me, it's the same thing, trusting and just like leaning back and waiting for the, whatever is coming to come. It's which hard. Also, it's it's really so hard. hard sometimes. And like, there were three things, like it was three things that happened in the first time I wanted to control it. So when you say it's hard to not want to control mm -hmm. at first, I wanted to control it. Mm -hmm. And so I tried and what happened was it got worse. Yes. And then the second time I was like, 
okay, a little bit better. Like we're going to deal with this a little bit better, but still really hard to just relinquish control here. So like full control was not let go of yet. And the Mm -hmm. third time I was like, I'm being taught something right now Mm -hmm. and I need to sit down and I need to let this unfold around me Mm -hmm. so that I can, you know, see what's happening before I make a move. And it wasn't just like that point in business, but like any time in you know my life, like that awful relationship that ended for me, like I was holding on to that so tight, yeah, so tight. Why won't they treat me better? Why won't they choose me? Why won't they make me feel good? And it's like if I had just sat down and be like, "They're showing you something right now." Yes. Like yeah, release, right? So yeah. it's not easy, and it wasn't just like, "Oh, I can always just go with the flow." It's that. I got slapped so hard every time I tried to control it further (laughs) that I just learned that the best thing for me to do is to allow it to unfold and see what's coming. It's the, the the true, I think it's the, I'm going to say it's the truth of the matter. It's been true for me is it's always better than you expected it to be. Mm -hmm. It's always better than you expected it to be. And that reframe when things are tough, when things are going sideways, to ask and you said it I'm just repeating it but like what is this showing me what is my lesson here there is something here and you know I often invite people in breath sessions to bring in that sense of curiosity and not judgment and and I invite that into our life like okay what is why is this happening just that curiosity and and again then that brings us back to the power being inside, everything's inside, the answer's inside. If we can come at life with a sense of curiosity and wonder instead of judgment and expectation, it all unfolds Mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. It does. Yeah. And I mean, the greatest lesson for that for me was definitely my husband. Like Mm -hmm. I went through all of that and I held on so tightly and you know, I can just literally see it. Like the universe is just looking at me being like, girl, we have something so good for you. If Mm -hmm. you just freaking let go, if you just trust us, we are bringing something (laughs) to you. You don't know what it is yet. Right. Like now, obviously hindsight, so fun. Um, I can see, you know, I have a toddler here as well. And this amazing man who's like literally everything I used to dream about back then. Mm everything that I was like, I just want someone who chooses me every day above everybody else and like Mm -hmm. looks after his family. And I want to know what that feeling is like, but I was holding on to the exact opposite for so long. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, I know how this plays out and I know that I have to do my part. How did you and Austin meet? We actually met at the gym, which is like, I feel kind of hard. (laughs) A lot of people are like, how did you meet someone at the gym? It's so hard to talk to them at the gym. And I'm always like, yeah. if a woman is interested in you at the gym, she's going to let you know. That's and I'm true. Not say she's going to say something, but she'll be around. She'll she make sure some eye contact. Like you'll have, she's not going to just stonewall you, right? So if someone's mm-hmm. interested, like you will know. I love that. I met an ex-boyfriend at the gym. I wasn't interested, <laughs> but I ended up. I ended up interested. I ended up interested later. Okay. I love that. And is he like, is he into any of this stuff? So he's like, honestly, open to literally anything that um, I am into. So like Mm -hmm. he's gone with this. This has been a pretty abrupt change for me. Right. And Mm -hmm. he's just like gone with the flow. This is great. Do your thing. Like if I'm meditating in the morning, he'll come downstairs and like be really quiet and like get Brooks like a bottle, but like not interrupt me. Like, He just knows, um, but he was not raised like religiously or like, it's hard for somebody who's never experienced that to just be really open to it. Mm -hmm. Whereas he's like, love that for you. But he's also, I don't know. I've never met a man with, um, such calm energy before. Like he's, I almost like, I always describe him as soft masculine because like, he's such a strong masculine in the way that like, and it's weird for us because I'm the income earner. Right. So a lot of the time mm-hmm. people are like, well, that's a masculine thing to do. And I'm right. Like, You're totally right. I love my business. I love working it, but he still stays that strong masculine because I don't deal with the money. Yeah. And he looks after all of us. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that's what that is. Like, that's the masculine. Like they are looking after us. They're providing, they're protecting us. Yeah. 
And, um, but he's like soft. He's got that really calm, like doesn't have to show off, doesn't have to be like the biggest presence in the room. He's just solid and so safe. Like, yeah, just calm and safe, man. I love that. Or for your nervous system. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Thank God for that. Um, do you, it reminds me of, do you know who Monica Yates is? That name is really familiar. Yeah. So Monica Yates, she has a podcast called Feminine as Fuck. And yes. I mean, she's got a big Instagram following and she, she teaches a lot on masculine feminine energetics and, and she is also like the breadwinner in her relationship. And she has a, and she's you know, very vocal about her relationship. It's a big part of her marketing and her business. And she speaks about like, you can, as the woman earn more money and he can still like hold it down and provide in so many other ways. Mm -hmm. So I'm really happy that that dialogue is being shared. Um, you might like her stuff if you haven't listened to it. She's pretty fun. She swears a lot. She tells it like it is. She's young, but she's like wildly, she's like a very, very old soul in a very young human body. Oh, I'm going to so knock her out because that is amazing. I don't yeah. like where we got to the point where it was like masculine providing was only financial. Well, that was, that was because we were in the kitchen, honey. We were cleaning and cooking and that's all that we could do. It was that, that weird time that happened yeah. in history. It's so <laughs> wild, but I'm really glad that we're moving away from it and we're seeing all these amazing dads show up and know that like mm -hmm. you are the protector, you look after, you're involved, you're, mm -hmm. you know, a good example and the best mm -hmm. example I think that you can do for, you know, your kids is how you love their mom. Yeah. You yes. Family, right. Like it's really, really important because that shapes yeah. your kids. Yeah. Okay. More on like this evolution of you. Has it changed how you are in like family dynamics or friend dynamics? Like have people noticed a difference in you outside of uh, your immediate, immediate, like in the home? Um like have friends noticed a difference? Yeah. I'm just wondering if like your dynamics and relationships have changed. Cause I'm, I maybe I'm firstly mostly thinking of like family. Cause I know that my, I think about my family and when I started to get into this work and have a bit more, mm -hmm. um, calmness in my life and ability, like capacity to have challenging conversations maybe without blowing a gasket. Yes. There's been a shift. So I'm just curious if you're, if you've been able to bring this new version of Ash into your family life. Oh, hundred percent. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, like I was actually having a conversation with my sister the other day and she was struggling with a family dynamic mm -hmm. and I was able just to walk her through, like all she could see was why that, you know, someone got mad at her and she's like, that wasn't fair. And I was like, yeah, but can you see why they did that, how they got there? Mm -hmm. And so I'm actually able to like take a step back and like, I can, I understand so much better why people behave the way that they behave now. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like, I don't get as emotionally involved in things and in the family matter, like it has made me a way better parent. Mm, yeah. Like I have the capacity now to walk my kids through why they're feeling the way that they're feeling, mm -hmm. why they're acting that way. Instead of like, as parents, we we're so busy, right? So if our yeah. kid is freaking out or they're having a hard time, it's really quick to be like, send them away or, you know, just a quick punishment. Whereas now, like I will have a 45 minute conversation about something to be like, let's get to the root of why this is happening. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm like, I'm just more into doing the work to make sure that they understand what's happening. Right. Instead mm -hmm. of just, yeah. I mean, I've had countless messages being like, I can see a shift in you and it is like great. Mm -hmm. Um, and really noticeable throughout the last year. And I'm like, that feels really good. It feels really good in here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Feels good over here. But the main takeaway, like for me, for sure has been my ability to parent. And because for so long, I wasn't in an environment to thrive in parenting. Like it's hard to be a really good parent when you don't have any money, when you're always stressed out, when you're the only one looking after the kids, like it's hard mm -hmm. to show up and be a good parent in that situation. Yeah. Um, so I just like how much it's helped me like grow as a mother. And then I'm like, that's the version that my kids get now. And that is amazing. Mm -hmm. I feel like too, like having a teenager, a couple, almost a couple teenagers or a couple teenagers, right? Yeah. God. Um, what a time to learn these skills. For yeah. you. <laughs> right in the nick of time. <laughs> my Lord. Yeah. Well, and it's so cool. Like how, however the self-care is, whatever the practice is, if it's just 
not just, this is just equally as important, but you know, kids that get to watch their mom and dad be active and healthy and have a fitness routine like that. When kids get to see that and see you dedicating that time to yourself, it's a game changer. And then you add in like, oh, mommy's meditating or oh, mommy's doing some breath work. And I have a girlfriend who's part of the essentials and she has two little kids and she's like, I have used breath practices sitting on the kitchen floor, sitting in the bathroom floor, like just to calm myself down. And, my, and her kids now are like, I just need to take a couple breaths. Like her kids know yes. to start utilizing these practices. Yes. That's what I do. Actually, my son, he's eight. Um, he gets really worked up and really angry mm-hmm. and he has a very hard time letting go of it. And so he'll be like, I just feel like I want to like hurt them when they do that. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. great. Like, well, that's, you know, you feel like that, but we can't do that. So let's find something where we can release the anger from us. So like, I actually walk him now through breath work to do it. Like he doesn't know it's breath work, but I'm like, I want you to take four breaths in. I want you to hold it for four and I want you Mm -hmm. to release it for four. Right. And what happens immediately when he does that even one time is he's way calmer. Yeah. Right. So like it's given him the tools instead of like raising men who are angry and don't know how to deal with their feelings, I think is one of my biggest fears. And That's a fair. lot of this for boys isn't talked about. Mm-hmm. They're not working through it. They're not coached how to do it, you know, and then they grow up and think that anger isn't an emotion and that it's just, mm-hmm. you know, men aren't emotional, but it's like anger is a really big emotion and there's a lot of anger out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, yeah, it's such a blessing, especially for kids to see that as normal and mm-hmm. same with exercise and, you know, diet, like mm-hmm. no negative stigmas around that where it's just like, it's so normal. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, I mean, just a blessing for kids to see. It is. Okay. What's next? What's next for you? Like what, where do you go from here? You've hit the top of the company. Is there still room to grow? Of course there is. Oh yes. Top of the company doesn't mean like top of sales, biggest person in the room. Like I'm top of the company. I'm still one of the smallest fish in the pond. Okay. Right. So top of the company for us just means that we do 160,000 in volume every single month. That is the maintenance for the top of the company, Mm -hmm. but you know, you can grow. It's uncapped at that point, right? So it's how many more people can I help? Mm -hmm. How many more, you know, leaders can I grow up? How many, Mm -hmm. how much can I grow my income? Right? Like that's, what's really cool in this business Mm -hmm. is that like it's uncapped income potential. So I'm like, my goal is to double it by the end of the year from where I'm at now. So that's you know, kind of how I set my goals. Where do I want to see my sales at? Where do I want to see my income at? What does that do for our family mm-hmm. possibilities? So I, yeah, I, there's nowhere to go, but up from here, which is great. And mm-hmm. there's a lot of space to grow into. And something that's really cool is that I get to watch women who are doing so much more than me. Like I always say, I love being in rooms where I know the least, where I'm, yeah. you know, I'm so small in that room because there's so much to learn and there's so much inspiration to pull from Mm -hmm. where these leaders are showing up and it's so inspirational. So I'm like, there isn't, I don't ever feel like I've arrived. Right. Which is great. I'm like, I'm always wanting to grow and do more. And, um, you know, I have, I have really big goals and I'm not, I'm not a settler at this point. Mm -hmm. Good. So, okay. So for this year, we're doubling, doubling the income. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I love that for you. I love that for your family and your team. Cause that also means like really good things are happening for your team. If you're doubling your income. Yep. Ah, okay. What do you want to share with the people? Where can we find you? What's, what's going on? How can we work with you? Oh, yes. Um, the main way to find me is through Instagram. It's my little business bubble. I love it. I am again, like I'm tough as a mother. It's all one word on Instagram. Um, And, you know, if you are looking to diversify your income or maybe you're looking for community in motherhood or Mm -hmm. just doing something else, maybe you want a little bit of wiggle room. We all start business for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, I know the reason why I started isn't the reason why I'm here now, which is great. Uh, Maybe you want to get into like personal development or like growth, like, or just be in a room where people challenge you to grow. Uh, I have used Arbon. I've used network marketing as that vehicle. And I mean, there's so much opportunity out there, but this is just what I've chosen. And uh, you can always just send me a message. And I love chatting and meeting people before we do business together because 
once you're in business, you know, you want to know who you're in business with, but yeah, I am always open to working with more people and I love, love, love helping people succeed in life and grow their income and change their story. Change the story is the biggest one for me. Yeah. I love that. Um, you just said something. Why is my mind, my mind is like, it's in like flutterland right now. Anyways, you said something in there that I wanted to speak on. And I'll edit that out, but oh no, I really want to remember what it was. We're talking about business growth, working with me, changes. Oh, the, um, yeah. And, and I've heard this from so many people that like, do you want to like deepen in self-development, join a network marketing team? Like that's because there has to be like such a strong sense of self. Yes. And like, that's actually so true because you, you can only go so far in business as an entrepreneur as you've developed yourself, right? So oh, yeah. it's not like, it's not usually about the business model or sales or whatever it is. It's how far can you push yourself? How much can you overcome? How much mm-hmm. are you going to grow? How much are you going to develop into being a leader? Like mm-hmm. it depends on you, how mm-hmm. like the success of your business is. Yeah. Right. And like every level in my company that I've gone through, I've had to do so much personal work to get to the next one because there was just so much that I had to change. Like even the income, like I was not ready to receive $20,000 a month. I was like, Mm -hmm. that scares me. Like, you know, you have to grow into the type of person who knows that you're worthy of that. Mm -hmm. And then eventually that kind of comes the bare minimum. Yeah, so there's so much. Yeah, network marketing has so much growth in it because you're in an environment where people do push you to be yourself. Like we don't co-sign excuses. We're not gonna try to keep you the smallest version of yourself. Like your success is my success. So why would I not want to help you grow? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Love it. Okay. All the people, go see Ashley. <laughs> go hang with Ashley in the Instagram, in the Instagram world. Thank you so much um, thanks. For me. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming on. I mean, I'll talk to you again real soon, but, um, yeah, put all your, all your goodies in the show notes and make sure everyone knows how to find you. Absolutely. Thanks so Wonderful. much. Thank you.